Well, the race for the White House continues out west. Uh, 58 GOP delegates up for grabs in Arizona, 40 in Utah. Joining me now, Tammy Bruce, Gina Loudon, Mika Mosbacher, and Charlie uh, Kirk. Uh, I'll start with you, Gina. How do you, how do you see it shaking out tonight, the results? Well, my prediction is that uh, with Trump uh, needing only about 50 percent of the remaining votes and Ted Cruz needing about 80 percent of the remaining votes, um, after tonight, I think Arizona goes to Trump. That means he'll have 58 uh, of those delegate votes and about 40 of those will go to Ted Cruz, the Mormon vote from Utah, of course, going to Ted Cruz. And I think that Ted Cruz had a chance this morning in his press conference after the terrorist attack to maybe win some of those Arizona votes. But when, you've, when you're talking to people on the border, the blame needs to go squarely in the camp of Hillary and Obama and adherent Islamic terror, not onto your opponent. I think that's where he maybe misstepped. You know, I, I, I think maybe Ted Cruz has, uh, he focuses a lot on, t uh, uh, on Donald Trump. Just to alert the audience, uh, he, he brought up the fact that Donald Trump yesterday suggested that we we're doing too much or maybe should get out of NATO. I don't think he was blaming Donald Trump for the events that happened overseas, mm -hmm. Mika. But, uh, you know, of course, uh, some people are up in arms about it. Others aren't. How do you think it's going to impact the race? Uh, well, it definitely is. First of all, with Rubio out of the race, it's thrown the GOP into the grand old panic party. The old line establishment are trying to figure out which lane to merge into. Do they merge into the Trump populist lane or do they merge into the Cruz conservative lane? Cruz gave an outstanding substantive speech yesterday at APAC. I think that he is clearly the smartest person in the room when it comes to policy, and that should help him going into Utah where the voters are more educated, there's fierce defenders of religious liberty, and Romney has had an epiphany is actually campaigning for Cruz. Yep. I think it will hit the ball out of the park in Utah. I think going into Arizona, I agree with Gina, he has an uphill battle. Those are frustrated everyday working Americans who are very much for Trump. And I so think let me it's go to going you, Charlie. to be more difficult for Cruz. Right, there. Charlie Kirk, uh, I, I mean, I think almost everyone probably agrees in with how the outcome could be, although there was some uh, scuttlebutt yeah. of perhaps a Cruz upset in Arizona, but we know Donald Trump has won a ton of early voting, and uh, we'll see what happens there. But I, what some are saying now, though, if Ted Cruz does well today in Arizona, it could bode well for him going down the road. Uh, is that... A, is that sort of, uh, I don't know, rationalization or is there something to it? No, that, that's definitely correct. And Cruz has an uphill climb. I mean, a lot of his more friendly states have already had caucuses and primaries. It's important to note, and I think that the party should really take a firm stance on this, whether early voting should continue in primaries. I mean, if you look at a lot of the early votes uh, were casted two weeks ago when Marco Rubio was still a candidate. Now he's completely irrelevant. I'm guessing those voters would like their ballot back. So I think there's a lot to be said with early voting, not to mention the states that are coming up. Wisconsin has an April 5th primary, and then we go east. Then you have Pennsylvania, Delaware, and Maryland. Those states look to be a lot more friendly territory for Donald Trump. So it, I think Ted Cruz has to do very well tonight. If he can finish within mm -hmm. seven points in Arizona and, and prove that he had the late surge and then win, win the majority uh, in Utah, which would then give him all the delegates right. in Utah, he can make a case that this is truly a two-man race. And I still can't figure out what John I, Kasich is doing I think it's a two-man race. race, but John Kasich is hanging in there. He's yeah. something of a spoiler, some say for the VP spot, spot but he's not going away either. Well, he's not. And in any other normal circumstance, if he wasn't there to play a spoiler, someone like this would be out obviously, uh, as Rubio was out. So clearly there's a strategic reason here. It's not really about the voters or what's best for America. We've learned recently that mm -hmm. uh, Marco Rubio turned down a unity ticket with, with Mr. Cruz, also clearly indicating he's in it for himself, that he wasn't thinking about what would be best for the nation, that there's ego involved. But the voters mm -hmm. today, look, I don't, I don't know when it comes to the terrorism if it would affect the way that people are voting. I think there's already a sense uh, of wanting the outsider right. because of the nature of what's going on here we're aware of the terrorist dynamic the the uh, lack of security in this country and I think that's where both Mr. Cruz and Mr. Trump are why they're leading another obvious ticket that would be unbeatable would be Trump and Cruz at this point and that is something that they have to yeah. seriously consider who knows maybe it can still happen all right guys thanks mm -hmm. a lot